Exploding in the Ocean Expanding Islands of Trash Psalm 1,000 miles northeast of Hawaii in a remote patch of the Pacific Ocean hundreds of miles from any national boundary the detritus of human life is collecting in a swirling current so large that it defies precise measurement bottle caps, toothbrushes, light bulbs, popsicle sticks and tiny pieces of plastic each the size of a grain of rice inhabit the Pacific garbage patch an area of widely dispersed trash that doubles in size every decade and is now believed to be roughly twice the size of Texas but one research organization estimates that the garbage now actually pervades the Pacific though most of it is caught in what oceanographers call a gyre an area of heavy currents and slack winds that keep the trash swirling in a giant whirlpool. Scientists say the garbage patch is just one of five that may be caught in giant gyres scattered around the world's oceans. Abandoned fishing gear like fishing line and nets account for some of the waste but other items come from land after washing into storm drains and out to sea Plastic is the most common refuse in the patch because it is lightweight, long-lasting, durable, and an omnipresent disposable product in both advanced and developing societies. It can float along for hundreds of miles before being caught in a gyre and then, over time, breaking down. But once it does split into pieces, the fragments look like confetti in the water. Millions, billions, trillions and trillions more of these particles are floating in the world's trash field gyres, PCPs, DDT, and other toxic chemicals cannot dissolve in water, but the plastic absorbs them like a sponge. Fish that feed on plankton ingest the tiny plastic particles. Scientists from the Algalita Marine Research Foundation say that fish tissues contain some of the same chemicals as the plastic. The scientists speculate that toxic chemicals are leaching into fish tissue from the plastic they eat. The researchers say that when a predator, a larger fish or a human, eats the fish but eats the plastic, that predator may be transferring toxins to its own tissues and in greater concentrations since toxins from multiple food sources can accumulate in the body. Charles Moore found the Pacific garbage patch by accident 12 years ago when he came upon it on his way back from a sailing race in Hawaii. As captain, Mr. Moore ferried three researchers his first mate and a journalist here this summer in his tenth scientific trip to the site. He is convinced that several similar garbage patches remain to be discovered. Anywhere you really look for it, you're going to see it, he said. Many scientists believe there is a garbage patch off the coast of Japan and another in the Sargasso Sea in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. The Pacific Garbage Patch gained prominence after three independent marine research organizations visited it this summer. One of them, Project Casey, based in San Francisco, is trying to devise ways to clean up the patch by turning plastic into diesel fuel. Environmentalists and celebrities are using the patch to promote their own causes. The actor Ted Denson's nonprofit group Oceana designated Mr. Moore a hero for his work on the patch. Another Hollywood figure, Edward Norton, narrated a public service announcement about plastic bags, which also make they make their way out to the patch. Mr. Moore, however, is the first person to have pursued 
serious scienti scientific research by sampling the garbage patch. In 1999, he dedicated the Algalita Foundation to studying it. Now, the foundation examines plastic debris and takes samples of polluted water off the California coast and across the Pacific Ocean. By dragging a fine mesh net behind his research vessel, a 50-foot aluminum catamaran, Mr. Moore is able to collect small plastic fragments. Then, researchers measure the amount of plastic in each sample and calculate the weight of each fragment. They also test the tissues of any fish caught in the nets to measure for toxic chemicals. One rainbow runner from a previous voyage had 84 pieces of plastic in its stomach. The research team has not tested the most recent catch for toxic chemicals, but the water samples show that the amount of plastic in the gyre and the larger Pacific Ocean is increasing. Water samples from last February contain twice as much plastic as samples from just a decade ago. This is not the garbage patch I knew in 1999, Mr. Moore said. This is now a totally different animal. In other words, the plastic in the world's oceans is increasing. And, yes, and it absorbs toxic chemicals which then are ingested by the sea life or the fish on the ocean, which in turn can be eaten by humans. For the captain's first mate, Jeffrey Ernst, the patch was just a reminder that there's no whale that isn't affected by humanity. The world's oceans are becoming more and more polluted and contaminated year after year day after day and on top of all this there's much more going on something much more something much bigger and again these are more signs of the end times transition days the transition is happening an ongoing continuing process it's building and there are all kinds of signs happening daily all around the world.